Welcome into another episode of the West Life Podcast. I am your host, Josh Barnett. As we get into the preview for the West Tigers playing up at Suncorp against the Dolphins, please give us a follow at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter and on those profile pages or at westtigers.com.au. You'll find a link to all of our stuff, including our YouTube channel, our Patreon, and all the stuff that we do. Please give us a like and a subscribe on the YouTube channel if you can. That'd be truly appreciated. Firstly, just want to give a shout out to our sponsors supporting us again, Wes Ashfield. Ashfield's local favorite dumpling restaurant, New Shanghai Night, is now open at Wes Ashfield. That's right, you heard it correctly. Now you can enjoy delicious and authentic dumplings in the heart of Ashfield. Also, they have a night, another exciting announcement a highly anti- anticipated soft opening of the Bellagio restaurant is happening on Friday, the 5th of April. This will be known for its authentic Italian and Mediterranean cuisine. Can't wait for those. Visit West Ashfield and grab a table at New Shanghai Night and make sure you book your table for the soft opening of Bellagio restaurant. HolmanBarnesGroup.com.au Righto, first up, we're going to get in to some Rob Stradamus for the week. Gave us some good tips last week, so let's see what he has for us in coming this week. It's, it's Look, it's too early in the week for horse racing one, so we might put something up on the socials on Friday, Rob. But um, just want to yeah th- reiterate our partnership with Chase Bet. So if you sign up with... Chase Bet, there's a link. If you go to westtigers.com.au or the link in our profile, there's a big purple button. If you sign up through there uh, to Chase Bet and then send a little message to the guys, say you're from Westlife Podcast, they'll look after you there. And I've got to say this as well. What's gambling really cost costing you for free and confidential support? Call 1-800-858-858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. A U. There's a QR code too if you're watching on a television screen as well to make it make it easy for you. But um, what are you thinking this week, Rob? Well, guys, I, I want to try and stick with the theme. I think we've had a pretty good year so far with uh, Rob Stradamus. Being a Tuesday night, late on Tuesday, that we're recording the show and the team's only having come out a few hours ago, I'm definitely going to go with what you said, Josh. We're going to put something out on Friday together. And uh, that way we'll be able to give a, a sporting multi, like a, an NRL multi like we did last week, which got up. I uh, gave you two tips on the horses last week, one of which got up. Uh, so I would rather do something on Friday and give our loyal viewers a winner or two instead of just plucking something out of my you-know-where on Tuesday night just for the sake of it. I think that's only the, the right and fair thing to do. And I, I'd feel quite bad if I just put something up for the sake of it so um well, but just on just on chase bet guys i mean they they their, their west tigers price was as good as any price you could have found anywhere um and in terms of what they've got on the app the app is so easy to use they had an amazing offer last week sydney melbourne uh, adelaide and perth they had each way bets up to a hundred dollars uh and you got a bonus bet back of a hundred dollars so if you had fifty dollars each way and your horse came fourth you would have got a hundred dollars in bonus bets back, and they wow. selected ten, they selected ten races, predominantly uh, Flemington and Rose Hill. And if your horse came fifth as well, you would have got um, you would have fifth? got wow. uh, yeah, you would have got your money back as well, up to a hundred bucks. And for my friends that are annoying me via text, can you just leave me alone while I'm concentrating, please? <laughs> um, and yeah, so look, it, it's, it's a great app. I, I found it really easy to use. You know, take a sec before you bet, set a deposit limit and gamble responsibly. And, and we're trying to do that with you guys by hopefully we'll give you another winner. Uh, just on last weekend, we gave you uh, Mr. Brightside, which came nowhere. I gave you Mark Twain, which ended up at $9.50. And keep your eye on that in view to the Melbourne Cup. I think it was an enormous run. Ran from it was last of the six hundred and flashed home and won. So I really think mm. it's going to be suitable over a Melbourne Cup distance. And the same game multi uh, I gave you West Tigers plus eight and a half to be safe, under forty nine and a half to be safe. And I gave you Dream Buller as an any time try scorer, and you would have got six dollars fifty on that if you had uh, had a little wager on that. So all up, giving you a six dollar fifty and a nine dollar fifty. I think I think we couldn't have done much better. 
Uh, right, moving on to the game on Saturday evening. So 7.35 p.m. We are playing the Dolphins, the no-name Dolphins. I still think they should have gone with North Brisbane or something. But anyway, I don't understand having no name. But yeah, up playing at Suncorp Stadium, our team list. I'll do it as because it's probably a bit hard to read. I haven't shared it with the graphic this week. Uh, Dream Buller at fullback, Charlie Staines and Junior Tupo on the wings again, Solomona, Solomona Fatape and Justin Olam in the centres again. Jaden Sullivan moves into 5-8 to replace the suspended Lockie Galvin. Aiden Caesar at 7 again. In the forwards, we've still got Stefano, Kutua Kamanu, David Klammer at front row, Api Corusau at hooker, Isaiah Papali'i and Johnny Bateman back row, Fanil Pole at lock. The bench, uh, Latu Fainu makes his debut. So he's playing alongside his brother, Samuela, on the bench as well. Alex Twole is back as well to add a bit of bit of beef to the bench. And Alex Seyfarth is there as well. Brent Naden, who played uh, fullback for Cup last week, is 18th man. Uh, as, what are your thoughts on young... Uh, uh, Latu, sorry, I was trying to think which Fainu. Latu Fainu making his debut this weekend. I really enjoyed what I saw from Latu uh, in the uh, reserve grade game on the weekend. I'm really excited to see him get his chance to play. I'm sure he'll get minutes in this one, considering the like the the tired boys. But with him, I'm thinking he may come on potentially at hooker instead to give Appy a little bit of a breather because I don't see Appy playing 160 minutes in six days, uh, considering the amount of effort and the workload he puts in for this team. Um, but And he can play in that position. Uh, so he is a bit of utility value, because I think in his, his debut for Tonga, he played something like a 33-minute stint in that position. So he's got the ability to play a few positions. Uh, I'm really excited to see him debut along, um, and play alongside his brother. Rob, what are your thoughts with Jaden Sullivan coming into the halves? Oh, look, I'm, I hope he does really well. We've got to have that next up mentality. I'm, I'm very worried about him. Uh, he didn't kick very well. He didn't, um, you know, he didn't tackle well. He was ba- basically responsible for most of our tries against Canberra. Uh, I think what people aren't going to take too much notice of, it's not just the fact that he let in tries. I mean, every half generally misses tackles. Uh, I'll give you an unusual stat that you would not believe, guys. Lockie Galvin's played three full games, and he finally missed his first tackle against Parramatta yesterday. So he's gone three games with one missed tackle, which is just absolutely ridiculously good for someone of uh, you know 18 years of age. So we're going to miss Lockie's defence. We're going to miss his great little attacking kicking game. We're going to miss his running game. We're going to miss his creativity. Uh, he's a huge loss, guys. And as we said in the previous show, He's responsible for 12 of our 17 points that we scored yesterday. So I don't know how you replace him, but guys, we, we signed Sullivan on a $2 million deal for four years. So uh, if he doesn't show, you know, some form, I mean, you know, then it's going to be long-term question marks over his future with the club. I mean, I know he looks like the other one out for next year. What I'm kind of hoping, uh, uh, you know, as a, you know, as basically a bit of a Latu fan, I, I really hope Latu does a good job off the bench, whether we win or lose. And that way, when Galvin comes back, maybe Latu gets that utility spot in front of Sullivan. So there, there's there's quite a few things there. It's great to have Twal back. I'm sure Twal is going to play play massive minutes. I wouldn't even be surprised to see him start and and maybe just give one of the other boys a, a bit of a freshener. Uh, mm. But yeah, look, we're, we're just lacking in the big man department. I'd love to see Sione Fainu come back from injury soon. And as you know, we were uh, missing both hookers last week. Obviously, Jakey comes back from that concussion this week. Uh, He's been named in lower grades and hopefully Talon's not too far away. But look, we're we're just a little bit stretching the forwards. I I love the effort everyone's giving, but I I feel like our depth is really tested now. And, and, you know, hopefully we can make an acquisition or two prior to June 30th because I I just don't, unless, you know, a a Madame Moore or someone like that is going to step up, I... I don't think we can survive uh, with the forward depth that we've got at the moment. As uh, have you got access or the ability to read out the Dolphins list? I was just kind of running through the names in my head, and I might leave them to use a few uh, few tongue tropical tongue twisters in there. I might leave uh, <laughs> for you. 
Yep, I've got the team list open in front of me. Go for it. Um, all right, so fullback is Hamaso Tabuai Fido. Wingers are Jermaine Azako and Jack Bostock. Jake Avarillo and Herbie Farnworth are in the centers. Cody Nicarima and Isaiah Katoa are in the halves. The props are Jesse Bromwich and Thomas Flegler with Jeremy Marshall King at hooker. Felice Kafusi and Ewan Aitken are in the second row with Ray Stone replacing the suspended, uh, I forget his name, uh, Max Plath. Max Plath. Lock, yep. Josh Kerr, Kurt Donahue, Mark Nichols, and Kenny Bromwich are on the bench with Oren Keeley, Sean O'Sullivan, Jared Wallace, Tessie New, and Mason Teague in the reserves. This got, certainly got some unique names on that side. Uh, Roberto, who who's going to worry you? Obviously, the hammer is a big one. Oh, look, that that back, what, what they've got on us, they've got a lot of speed there, um, especially with the hammer. Their, their two centres are, are very dangerous, Farnworth and Avarillo. Well, I, I know Farnworth is, is more the strike centre. Uh, I'm really more concerned about Avarillo on Fata Ape. Uh, you know, they've got good finishes um, on, on the wings. Uh, they've got a tough forward pack as well, guys. I, my biggest concern, I, I don't see, uh, unless Sullivan really pulls a big game, I don't see where we get points from. So I'm very concerned that we'll struggle to even get 12 points. I'm scared of the five-day pack-up, especially having used 15 men in 30-degree heat yesterday. Uh, you know, the Cowboys have had 48 hours more rest than us. Mm. Um, you know, they, but they've got a good solid forward pack. They've got Benji's uh, younger brother uh, at hooker, who's a good solid hooker, and, he, and he's always, you know, got a cheeky dart from dummy half if the markers are a bit tight or a bit cumbersome. So, uh, look, I, I, I would back ourselves to beat them at full strength. I think Galvin out is just, it's a hurdle. I, I really don't think we can overcome, but I, I know we're not going to die trying or not, you know, give it a go, but um, the Dolphins won't beat themselves. I don't think we'll beat ourselves. I just think they'll have a little bit too much speed out wide. Has who in that team list worries you? I think the players that worry me most, are, yeah, Hamaso Tabuifido, Jermaine Azarko, Cody Nicarima, I think, is probably going to be one of the most dangerous players out there on the field. And they have a really strong starting forward pack. You're like, you've got uh, Jesse Bromwich and Tom Flegler, the starting props. They are two big boys who do a job and they do it very well. And then Felice Kafusi and Ewan Aitken, two second rowers that are also extremely good at their job. I think the thing that um, worries me the most in regards to us, like Rob said as well, is the the short turnaround and the fact that we played 15 players uh, yesterday. But in saying that, Alex Twal, he is one of those players that can play a whole bunch of minutes. I think there's been t- games where he's played upwards of 60 minutes. So he's definitely got the ability to, ability to do that again for us if he needs to, um, which would take some of the pressure off the other guys who have played, who did play a lot of minutes yesterday. So there's a lot of potential there. And I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more use of the bench this week. Um, mm. But yeah, it's it, it's going to be a really tough game. Yeah, it's three guys that didn't play on the weekend. So they should be fresh as. So. Uh, right, so let's move on to our tips. So I'm on 22. The boys are left back on 17. Let's open. I'm going to open up my Chase Bet app to bring up. Let's see what the odds are for this game. Uh as and I have gone the Storm in the first game. Rob, you've gone the Bronx. Yeah, I, honestly, guys, I, I say this every week almost about every game. This is a toss of the coin. Uh, I like what I saw from Brisbane. I, I accept that uh, Melbourne have got Munster likely to play and Jerome Hughes as well. So they got their, their first string halves combination back. But I, I still think, I, I just like what I saw from Brisbane last week. And, and I think the comp's shown that it doesn't matter who you're missing. Like you can't take teams for granted. We had a few games on the weekend, for example, Penrith, uh, you know, versus the Roosters. I mean, everyone thought the Roosters would win without Cleary and without Fisher Harris. You, you can't take them for granted. And and I think there were a couple of other games as well. Like look at St George. St George got pummeled the week before against the Cowboys, and they were playing a hot Manly team, and and they thrashed Manly. So you, you just got to be up on your game. And I, I'm just really, I, I just think the Brisbane team. They, they need to win a little bit more. Um, mm. And they, they might run them down in the end. Like the, the Storm have had a fortnight off and generally, you know, they'll start well, but how, how will they finish? So 
Uh, I'm going to go Brisbane, but like my tipping record's hopeless. And I'll, I'll be honest, guys, I'm, 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 it's terrible of me to say this. Unless i got money on it, I really don't care. I'm not, <laughs> in a tipping, I'm not in a tipping cot with money. As long as I get Rob Stradamus right and give the punters out there a winner, I really don't give two hoots about tipping comps. I, I come up with my tips in about two and a half minutes. Two. Yeah, set away, but here we are. Uh, five points. But here you uh, are, thrashing us. Yeah. Two, uh, <laughs> Two dollars seventy five for the Broncos. So a bit of bit of value there. Rob uh Rob as Storm look Stormer at home, that's why I picked them. Yeah, Stormer at home and they've got those three big ins of their main halves, so Cameron Munster and Jerome Hughes. So they're gonna be ready to rip in and they've also got Christian Welsh coming back in off the bench. Um yeah, home ground advantage. Their overall record against Brisbane. I think is just a little bit too good at the moment. Yeah, Brisbane beat them uh, in, I think, the final round last year. But uh, this Storm team coming off the bye, I think they're they're going to be hungry. Uh, they're going to want to mm. put on a show for their home fans. So I've gone with them. Yep, a healthy Sean Bloor in there as well. Go get him, Sean. Uh, Chookies, we've all gone Chookies, the heavy favourites against the Doggies at uh, Homebush on Friday Six o'clock. No Easter show. Easter show, Easter show is wrapped up. So, um, yeah, pretty. The dogs didn't look that great against the bunnies last week. Chookies. Anyone got any reasons why the doggies can beat the chooks in this one? No, I, re- I really don't have any. I think the roosters packs too strong. Uh, the roosters mm. have been a very Jekyll and Hyde. They look like champions round one. They look like crap against Manly round two. They look like champions round three against South. And they look like shit against Penrith round four. So it looks like they're going to win on the odd weeks. Um, they've, they've got a team that could win the comp. But I don't know. I just I just find, from a, if I was looking at it from a Roosters point of view, I just think it's a little bit disheartening that they can be on one week and not give, you know, it's look like they don't give two hoots the next week. I, I didn't see any spirit last week. I, I know they got a couple of late tries against Penrith, but... I thought that scoreline absolutely flattered them. So um, they've they've got all the ingredients, but I just yeah. But, but again, Canterbury they they don't have a strong forward pack. I, I know they got some strike out wide, but I, I can't see the the dogs worrying the Roosters, especially after the Roosters, you know, like got embarrassed by Penrith. Uh, anything to add on that as at all? You don't have to. No, that that sums it up pretty much. Um, and obviously, Josh Adokar is a big loss for the dogs again. Um, plus they got a couple of players suspended, I think uh, Kurt Morin and another player. So they've lost a little bit there. Their depth is really going to be tested in this one. I just think the Roosters will be a little bit too good. Yeah, they lost that uh, Jacob Preston, I think, to injury, Josh. Uh, Aaron, sorry. Yeah, that's the one. Preston. Uh, we've all gone Newcastle Knights up there in Steel City. $2.95 for the Dragons. Look, the Dragons... It's good value. value. Yeah, they're only three to one for them. I they let Lomax go this week, but yeah, maybe it, look the Knights at home are always strong, especially if Ponga is playing. But maybe um, well, Jacko's yeah. back this week, Josh and uh, Tyson Gamble's yeah. been dropped. So this is basically mm. their their third halves combination in a few weeks. So look, I still think they're trying to find their feet and attack. Uh, I, I got no confidence in this game, but I just think Ponga just generally plays really, really well against poor teams. And I think he might be the difference. But again, I mean, we're expecting rain from Thursday to Saturday. So like, it depends on the weather. I think if it was a really, really dry track, I'd, I'd definitely pick the Newcastle Knights. But uh, Gagai's name back in as well. So hopefully he comes, he doesn't uh, become a late withdrawal. But I, I just think the Knights have got too much to play for. And and you know the dragons are a bit like the the roosters; they're having one good week, one bad week. So um, it might be their turn to have a bad week. Seven and a half start for the dragons. If it's raining, not a bad um, amount of points there. Uh, before, oh no, I've gone rabbitos at home. You guys have gone the Waz. Look, I've gone New New Zealand outside of New Zealand. Look, their favourites bunnies at two dollars and eight. I think maybe they'll just carry a bit of confidence after getting a win, even though it was the Bulldogs and it wasn't that convincing. Um, yeah, they're at home. That's why 
if, if in doubt, go the home team. But look, my heart would love the Wars to get up in this one. Uh, as why the Wars for you? So yeah, the Wars are two and two, and those first two losses they were in the game both times, and they lost two close ones. So they've had two close losses and a couple of solid wins. I I just think they're riding a bit of momentum now. Um, I think the Rabbits they're still not a lot to like and not a lot to trust about them. They've copped a a whole buttload of injuries. And I honestly think they're going to be struggling at least for the first of like the next four or five weeks or so. Mm. Um, I'm going to find it really hard to back them at the moment. I've gone with the Waz. Yeah, I just think there's a little bit too much momentum there. We don't play them for a while, do we? It's not too, we play them at Gosford round 16 or something. Yeah, somewhere around there. They'll probably find their form by then. Probably. Uh, Rob, was for you? Yeah, New, New Zealand, but again, not not with much confidence. I mean, the, they lost their five eighth now for an extended period. Uh, New Zealand in uh, what's his name? I think it's Luke Metcalf. Uh, they've got their fullback uh, Nickel Clockstar back, and they've shifted uh, Savasa Sheck back to the centres. Um, South South. I mean, they they had three hard games, even though they lost. They played three like top quality teams, but their win against Canterbury. I mean, I know they just got there, but they did defend tenaciously the last 20 minutes. Like Canterbury had a lot of ball, maybe because Canterbury had a, a rubbish attack. They, they couldn't get over the line, but look, very hard game to tip. I, I mean, if Latrell plays well, you, you'd think South win, but I, I don't trust South. I'm, I'm going New Zealand, but you know, as I say, my tipping form hasn't been too good. Uh, so it could go either way. Uh, I was tempted to tip Manly against the, Panthers, mainly at Brookie with Tommy Turbo healthy. My theory is always tip them, but I don't know. The Panthers, oh, I'm kind of doubting myself a little bit here, but um, you boys have got the Panthers as well as? Yeah, I I think it's really hard to tip against the Panthers at the moment. Obviously, mm. they, they still don't have Nathan Cleary, but they performed superbly without him against the Roosters, who I think are a much better team. Manly, I think, are starting to come back down to earth a little bit. Uh, just on Luke Brooks, they're getting some of those rocks and diamonds performances from him that we got so accustomed to. Uh, they dropped a lot of ball against the Dragons, and I don't think mm-hmm. those things are going to be things they can fix overnight. I think Penrith are going to come to town and put on a little bit of a performance against them. Uh, I think they, they, Ivan Cleary lives in Manly sort of area, doesn't he? So nice close game. I'm pretty sure he lives in Northern Beaches. So, home game for him. Uh, righto. You guys, you have no faith in the boys. I've tipped this again. I'm going for three in a row. I, I'm i 100% right in my tips for the West Tigers this year. I went loss, win, win. <laughs> I'm back in the boys. I reckon Appy Corusau will lead us to a win. I know no Galvin hurts, but I think we're a grinded out team anyway. And I think despite the quick turnaround, I reckon the boys can grind this one out against the Dolphins. If, if it was against a team, look, the Dolphins are tied first with us, I guess. But yeah, I, I think we can get it done. So I'm I'm back in the boys. Why, why are you cowards tipping the Dolphins? Oh, I don't think we should even be showing up, guys. I mean, if we're trying to, you know, if we're not going to play games at Leichhardt and we're worried about making more money as a club, I think we should cancel our airline tickets to Brisbane. I think we should forfeit the two points. We have no chance of winning, just like we had last week. We had absolutely no chance of being <laughs> at it. And I don't think we've got any hope this week. We've got a five-day turnaround. They've got a seven-day turnaround. They're too fast. They're too quick. They're too strong. Their bench is better. We can't win. Uh, they've got the best coach in the world. And, yeah, we just can't win. So I'm going to the Dolphins. Clint asked in the comment. Mock. There. As last time we won three in a row, did you mention that earlier? No, I didn't mention that, but I can tell you that off the top of my head. It was 2018, rounds four, five, and six. We beat Para, we beat the Storm, and we beat Manly. I was looking at literally going on the internet and look it up. You, you beat me to it. So, uh, what did you say? 2018. Yeah, round four, five, round and six. Four, five, and six. Bloody yep. hell. It's the, the whole different world since then, isn't it? 2018. Yeah, we're, we're down to one referee on the field now. 
Oh, yeah. And the six and tens are thing. Yeah. Uh, what did you say? Para Melbourne Manly is what you said, 2018? Yep. Bloody hell. It's been that long. I'm, I'm good, aren't I? I'm good. <laughs> uh, I'm just strolling back to see before that. So before that, 2016 Dragons Para Cowboys. So, yeah, it's been a lot. So two in the last seven years. Twice in the last seven years we've done it. At least we've done two in a row a few times, and it would be nice to get that mental hurdle of getting that third win, but I don't think Benji's going to be too worried about that. I've tipped the Dolphins, but I will say I may change my tip for this one. Um, I'm just extremely worried about the five-day turnaround, the way our bench was was slash wasn't utilized yesterday. Uh, it's going to be really tough. The Dolphins are riding a lot of momentum right now. Um, they're in first. No one would have expected that this game was going to be first versus sixth um, at this point of the season. So, yeah, I might change my tip, but I just am a little bit concerned about the fact that we've had to we have to play a five day turnaround after what was a, a pretty tough game in yeah almost thirty degree heat yesterday. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves, and might have to use this stat next week's preview. But as you know, the last time we won. Four or more in a row? No, but I would have a guess that it would probably be 2010, 11, or if not, back in 05. It would be 11 20, for sure. 2012. So we won seven in a row oh, in 2012. Yeah. So, and um, missed the finals. We still didn't make the finals. Dang. Yeah, well, we, won, we, lost, we lost five in a row before it. So. Okay. Yeah, so it's been, been a long, long while before we've uh, had a, a decent winning streak so man i was a much younger younger man when that all happened uh thanks for the question clint on to the next game cowboys wolf well, Coast titans five dollars 75 up in townsville to beat the cowboys yeah the titans suck cowboys are good playing at home pretty you'd almost put your house on this one rob i uh- yeah, look, I think this looks like a pretty straightforward one. But as we've seen, guys, if you don't show up on the day or you take a team for granted, they're going to pull your pants down. But, yeah, I, mm. I can't see. The Titans are in a world of hurt. Um, I don't think they made too many changes. I think maybe they got two different wingers this week, one due to injury. And I think Khan Pereira might have got dropped, which was uh, quite surprising. He's probably not getting involved enough. Uh, but, yeah, they, they were awful. They, they had a good start last week against the Dolphins, up 10-0 quite early and by half time they were losing and, and they showed no resilience in the second half. So um, I think the Cowboys should put a number on them. Just looking up the uh, most losses market. So yeah, Titans $2 favorites. Now we're actually fourth um, favorites now for most losses out to eight bucks as. Yeah. I think leading, I think leading into the season, we were probably second favorite for most losses, AKA the spoon, but yeah, the Titans almost look like a lock for that market at the moment. They are struggling. I honestly don't know when their first win is going to come. No Tino for the whole season is an absolute massive mm. loss. Um, they've obviously got their main choice fullback um, back again, and David Fafita is back as well. But Tino is an absolutely massive hole to cover. So I think they're, they're probably going to jag a few wins here and there, but it's very hard to see them cut running anywhere but last now. And I, f- I feel sorry for them. Um, but as long as it's not us. Yeah, Tino and broke think, Appy's I've I've jaw. Enough. He broke I've Appy's jaw last year, so. To say that we're probably not going to win the spoon, and I'm quite confident to say that now, which is not a saying, not a phrase I thought I'd be saying a month into the season. Yeah, I might not say that. <laughs> they're in a club in a world of hurt, guys. Like, mm. they're, they're struggling. Even when they do well, they don't get crowds. It's just not going to take off on the Gold Coast. We've had like three or four goes at this. I, I, I don't understand why we keep persisting or, you know, we're trying. I guess we've got a team there because the AFL have one. But uh, for some reason... Well, where our, were they our, first? Our major codes don't seem to succeed on the Gold Coast and, and they're, they're just floundering. Should have brought in the Central Coast Bears. Yep. Uh, Canberra Raiders. Look, this is... We've all gone Raiders here, but the Eels, it's $1.80, two bucks here. So... The Eels looking to bounce back still. No Moses, is there? He's out for no, a while. He's, he's, he's out, out for three yeah, months or half so. a year or something. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Um, yeah, Raiders a dollar eighty at home. I think that's pretty, pretty good odds there. So, yeah, surely the Eels can't. They're also obviously. Well, I suppose it's not till Sunday. They have got six days to recover, not five like us. But yeah, their their heads heads will be down. I don't know. I could be wrong. I think we've all tipped Raiders, but oh, so could the Raiders, Josh. They had an eighteen nil lead, you know, against yeah, Grand true. And, and got out. Yeah. I, I I think this is a tough one again. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Power won. I'd you know, I'll just see how things are later in the week. But I reckon this is this will probably be one for the unders. This will be I, I don't think I can't see both teams scoring twenty points. I, I think this will be a low scoring game. Uh the Raiders, win? thank you. Yeah, the Raiders got uh, they lost Zach Hosking as well with that really bad head clash, so he'll be out for at least a couple of weeks. Um, but generally, the Raiders have been playing pretty well. I just think they couldn't stop the momentum against Cronulla, and it's pretty hard to win down in Canberra. Uh, Paras still don't have a, a genuine halfback, and they've named the same half. So uh, again, I, I just I just don't know where Para are going to get their points from. I know I know they'll show up and they'll play really hard, but where are the points going to come from? Uh, Sam. As Sea Dogs said, put ten bucks in the cow cowgirls. You win a dollar forty if you put uh, if you back the Cowboys for ten bucks. I think that's right. Dollar fourteen, be a dollar forty profit. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good maths, Josh. Uh, low grades this weekend, so we went through them in the uh, review show. As we record this, they haven't put up the draws for them, but as do you want to reiterate which of our teams are in the finals in the uh, lower grades this week? No worries. Yep, so it's the SG Ball Magpies that are uh, in the finals. They will have a bye this week uh, and play the lowest ranked winner out of third versus sixth and fourth versus fifth. Uh, and the Lisa Fiola Cup girls so the younger girls team they finished fifth they'll be playing the central coast roosters this week who finished fourth uh i'll just have a look uh to see if they have put it up yet uh, let's check this afternoon they hadn't had those out but Rob's maybe tomorrow looked, yeah good sign rob the juniors especially the magpies side of thing more good kids coming through yeah, there was there was enough talent in the lower grade game. I mean, I, I thought that the cup was like the standard wasn't great, and a couple of couple of the tries were quite soft. But uh, we got a couple of outside backs there that looked all right. I was actually more impressed with the our I don't I forget his name our other winger in cup as opposed to Lob City. Uh, I thought Lob City got caught out a couple of times jamming in off his wing, uh, but the other guy looked pretty good too. So look, there, there's a bit there. We I, I guess everyone will get their turn at some stage through the year. So. Um, yeah, I, I still think this year's a learning year, but it's it's great to be sitting on uh, two wins out of three. Uh, so New South Wales Cup, they're playing against the Bears, which is the Melbourne Storm feeder club. And as someone in the comments just uh, pointed out, Nelson so- Asofa Solomona, does I say that right, As He's playing for the Bears in Cup. So look out, Magpies yeah. boys, the big fella playing against them. Uh Brent Naden playing halfback for the Magpies. That's 3 p.m. Sunday, by the way, if anyone wants. I've never been to North Sydney Oval. It's the only ground in Sydney. I've never seen a game of rugby league. Yeah, I really... I haven't seen rugby league there, but I've seen a a fair bunch of cricket there. Cricket, yeah. Um, And AFLW. That's almost a shame Shawnee's playing first grade. Could have seen him play playing against our Magpies. But uh, Heath Mason's back at fullback. Uh, Josh Felody, who had a pretty good game in the centres there. I won't go through the whole team. But, yeah, Naden halfback is interesting. Um, Kepa Oa, obviously, being sent back. Jackie Simpkin back at hooker. Um, anyone else as in that side, Magpie side, that to keep an eye on? Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised Heath Mason wasn't named at number seven for this game. He's still at fullback. Um, I, I really want to continue to see his development. I don't know if this game is going to be televised for us uh, anywhere or if we'll have any way to watch it. So it'll mm. uh, it'll be interesting to see. 
what Twitter pages like nothing but West Tigers uh, have to say about how about the performance or if anyone does get out to North Sydney and is able to let us know how the boys go, that'd be great as well. Uh, interesting. Ru- yeah, Rua is playing the Bears, as is our old friend um, Ben Stefanovic, former Magpies, and uh, Alan Fitzgibbon as well. So a few ex Magpies in there. So interesting to see that. Uh, Jersey Flag, they're playing down in Broad Meadows, where that is, I have no, no idea, somewhere down in Melbourne. Um, they are playing 2 p.m. on Saturday afternoon against the Melbourne Storm Jersey Flag side. And, um, yeah, check your local guides for that one. Right, patreon.com forward slash Westlife. Let's see what our beloved Patreon peeps have said for us this week. If you want to support and take part in take part in the show, patreon.com forward slash Westlife or... There's a YouTube membership uh, as well, which if you want to join us in the Discord, which I'm going to open up right now, see what the guys, I saw there's quite a few in the weekly rant channel. What have we got? Right, a local loony says, a little moment I noticed being live at the game when Galvin was coming back on the field, Appy gave him a pat on the back and a massive bout of encouragement. Sort of like a keep your head up and play your game. So glad this guy is our captain. Not a bad little comment there. Also, shout out to Charlie Staines. It's not easy marking Big Micah, but thought he did a great job today. Best of game, best game of the season for him. He obviously wrote that the night of the win over Para. Uh, Shane Cole, it's a great win. Has our bad luck hoodoo finally moved on to another club? Olam was best on field, but a big rap to Charlie Staines. His defense was immense. He cops a lot of flack, but he was outstanding yesterday. Uh, Carla a.k.a. Amazon Girl, said Caesar, the salad, the fossil, a genuine seven. Uh, feels so freaking good. Uh, Edard, Edard, Edard said he was fantastic, obviously referring to Aiden Caesar, but also made me, made me shit myself right at the end with some shocking kicks. Uh, yeah, there was a seven tackle set that he gave away. That wasn't great. Uh, ben Ellis said, not everyone can have as good a kicking game as that. So you guys are just having conversations in the rant channel. Take conversations to the other channel. Um, <laughs> uh, Brighton says, hey, all, I've created, created a little poll. I did a little poll for uh, everyone everyone asking about second favorite teams. As I think you did, did that one. A second favorite team. Um, it was the Panthers for me, but that's... That's tough. Now I've always always had a soft spot for Penrith, but now they've won three in a row. A bit tough. Second favorite, Rob. Can you bring yourself to have a sixteenth least hated team? I look. I said to you guys a few weeks ago, I've got a soft spot for South, but I've got to be honest. Every week they've lost, I couldn't give two shits. So, mm-hmm. so I, I, I like if we're out of contention, I cheer for them in the semi-finals. But no, I don't have a second favorite team. It's it's West Tigers and then West Tigers. Yeah, I mean, the Dragons, I've got no beef with the Dragons. A lot of friends that go for the Dragons. Not too much hate. My um, my son, my three-year-old's already learnt to, whenever he sees a Rabbitohs jersey, he says that we hate them. He knows the red and green already. It's kind of brainwashed him into saying that now, but... Yeah, so it's definitely not the Rabbitohs or Eels for me. They're definitely one and two for the other end. Uh, as who do you vote for? Who's your second favourite? I don't really have one because I've never really been interested in following another team or anything like that. But if I had to absolutely pick one, I'd probably say the Warriors based on the sacrifices they made during the COVID-affected season. Uh, yeah, the, the Warriors good shout. So. Yeah, if I had to pick one, I'd say the Warriors. Really grateful to what they did during the COVID years, and it is nice to see them doing better than they have been in previous years. It was it was good watching them last year, and they were the team that I was cheering for in the finals last year. I was happy for them to to make it there and to, for them to get as far as they did. So if I had to pick a team, I'd say them. That's a great answer. I'm changing. Yeah, I'll go Wiles as well. I don't know why I didn't think. I was thinking Sydney teams in my head, but yeah, the Wiles, 100%. 
about the wilds. Uh, Scott Davo, you need to put none as an option for second team for questions. Talk, talking about the player poll, allow the choice of multiple teams for questions. Oh, is he talking about conversations, guys? <laughs> Let's, this is the weekly rant channel is for your rants for the for the show. You're having conversations. Not, not feedback. With. Um, there's this, a feedback. This channel is Josh's well. rant from, from the rant channel. This is my rant about the rant channel. I know you <laughs> support the show and you chuck us a few bucks every month, but follow the rules in the uh, in the Discord. Hey, speaking can't... about the questionnaire, Josh, are we are we going to touch on um, our mate Lockie Galvin tonight? Oh, do you want to do the the yeah, in, terms, in terms of the nicknames or he what they've suggest, got to say? He's saving it for suggest, night. Suggested nicknames. Um, uh, I'm trying to think how I can bring up. Or, or do we least... just stick with the Galvanator? The Galvanator is a good one. It was some good ones. You guys, off the top of your head, remember any of them? I sent you guys the list. Oh, they were on I'm, set I'm through. I'm sure Aaron can find them in Messenger. Yeah, I'm scrolling back up through the list, uh, scrolling back up to the list now. It's not too far away, so it shouldn't take me too long. Yeah, here it is. Uh, LG for one of them, Luke, like Luke Garner. So same initials as him. Um, hmm. Stick, I guess, long and lanky, not sure there's one. The kid, simply because he is. Uh, Loch Ness, it rhymes with orange, apparently. Uh, the Future, I like that one. Mr. Nobody, because nobody is perfect. Uh, Boy Wonder, he just keeps on growing and developing into an amazing game management type of player. Zinc, used to galvanize metal. Uh, someone said he kind of looks like Beavis from Beavis and Butthead, so that's a bit of an interesting one there. Uh, the Dream Maker, because we no longer have to go to sleep and have nightmares. Uh, there's a few references in there I didn't get. Probably one of my favorite ones, though, uh, and I hope no one considers this to be sacrilegious, was Jesus, because the kid is a miracle worker. Uh, <laughs> someone said, call him the goat. And uh, hang on, I'll uh, FedEx, because he delivers. Uh, Tricky Galvin, because he has a lot more tricks up his sleeve. Uh, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch there. Um, Rob, why don't you say your favourite one or the one you oh, came up with? Well, well, I hope they stick with the galvanator because I made it up. So I think I was the first one to come <laughs> out with that. But if we stick with the galvanator, I'll, I'll be very pleased with that. Um, I didn't mind, you know, Loch Ness Monster. Um, you know, another one, I, I think he is the truth because he just can't handle the truth. So, <laughs> uh, you know, Boy Wonder. I mean, there's, there's so many you could come up with. But uh, I think, you know, Nick, nicknames aside, guys, this guy doesn't know how old he is. He's just Mr. Natural. He, he's just a complete footballer. And uh, I, I hope I'm not putting the mock on his future, guys. But I, I just, I've never been more excited about a rugby league player. That includes, you know, Benji Marshall, all, all the greats of the game. So uh, from a West Tigers point of view, he's got it all. I'm, I'm just actually seeing the Buller try now on replay as we talk. Like, who does that in their third game? You know, just he's just got amazing composure. He's got a sense of, of timing. He, mate, he's just got the goods. He's just got the goods. And if I'm telling you now, if he's not a tiger for life, whoever takes him, like I'm going to be up on murder charges. Like I will go, I will hunt you down. I will track you down. I'm happy to spend the rest of my life in jail if it means <laughs> keeping him as a tiger. And I'm not freaking joking. Nick Pilatus, he had a good run. Uh, Luke Tiger twenty four. At 2047, said, Is a Tigers premiership window closer than we may have thought in pre season? Not saying it'll happen this year, but the arrival of Luai next year, you never know. Uh, look, at, in rugby league, you should, in a salary cap era, I know we haven't made the semis for 12 years, it should be closer than you thought. Yeah, within a couple of years, when they, like Rob said, we've got to keep these kids. If all goes to plan, then. Yeah, maybe a couple of years. Luai's a winner. Appy's a winner. Maybe. Who knows? Well, what team, I guess, when are Penrith going to, when's that juggernaut going to slow down? So, any but thoughts one, on that, one, one, thing, one thing for sure, guys, is if you've got Buller at one and you've got Galvin at six or, or Luai, either or, six or seven, whoever you want, and Coruscant still there, that's that's a spine, and that's a spine that's honestly it's it's as good a spine as you'd want. It's got a mixture of youth, experience, talent. If we can just build around it, just have a little bit of a stronger forward pack, get a couple of pieces in the back line. There's no reason why we can't challenge next year. And you know, I know it's only two wins, guys, but who knows? Maybe if we can win another couple of games in a row, we can 
you know, think think some uh, bigger dreams for this year. Uh, I think that'll just about do us for another week as we look forward to another weekend of West Tigers. Hopefully another win. Thank you. We're still in well in the hundreds and we're two and a half hours into recording this, obviously doing back to back shows tonight. So really appreciate everyone joining us on a Tuesday evening. Um, so enjoy your Wednesday off. We'll be back to normal broadcast procedures next week, Monday and Wednesday. So join us then. Thank you to the thousands of you that listen um, after the fact as well. And yeah, look forward to hopefully getting a, going after Brisbane, getting a win and then Cambo next week for the Dragons. So anything to add, fellas, before we... Yeah, I've definitely made an imprint Two and a half hours, it's like Joe Rogan esque this um, episode, but it's been a fun one. Uh, I just hope everyone's walking around with a bit of a strut in their step and wearing their Tigers gear proudly and and feeling good about things. You know, we've had a miserable, you know, not just a couple of years, but a miserable decade basically. So um, look, there's there's positive signs whether we lose games or win games. There's just a, a lot more positivity. Um, I always knew we we're going to turn it around. I just really didn't think it could happen so quickly. So, again, I've said it umpteen times now, make the effort to get out to Campbelltown, guys. If you want to see, you know, stadiums get government funding or rebuilt, you've got to yep. fill them out while they only fill, you know, 15,000. So, really hoping to see a lot of people on April the 14th at Campbelltown, rain, hail or shine, and want to get to meet a lot of you. We're going to be at the club beforehand. And, uh, yeah, it'll be just, just good to, to pack the place out and, and you know, start. You know, we want to take over the southwest. We've got to really, we really got to show that we want to do it. So, get out, and we're going to need all the help we can to beat St George minus the Galvanator. As anything to add? Yeah, I tell you what. If we do manage to beat the Dolphins this week, then um, Campbelltown is going to be heaving from the rafters, coming off three in a row for the first time in, like you said, uh, eight, six years or so. I'm just really hoping that we put in a good performance this week. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to another game of Tigers footy. And it, like you said earlier, Josh, by usually by halfway through the season, we're looking to next year and wondering when is when are things going to improve. We're in that state now. Things are improving. Things are getting better. The team is on the up. Um, the support is huge for the club and even for this podcast and everything like that. I hope a lot of people are signing up as members if they can. Yep. Don't forget, you can sign up as a member of the club for, I think it was $75 for the supporter membership, which is really good value uh, because you still get all the perks, all the benefits, plus the merch pack as well. Um, Discount on tickets good, as well. Yeah, good option there for those people who want to take that option. Support the club as much as you can. Show them that we believe they're heading in the right direction. Uh, yeah, bring on the Dolphins on Saturday night. 100%. Good luck to the boys heading up to Brisbane. Shouts to all our Queensland. Look, we, I went to Suncorp last year for the Broncos game. There was heaps of Tigers fans there. I know there's a big Tigers contingent. Plenty of our listeners live in southeast Queensland. So get out, support the boys. And, um, yeah, we'll see you Monday evening. Thanks again to everyone who tuned in. And as always, boys, go the Tigers. Go the, Tigers. Go the Tigers. Thanks for listening to another episode of the West Life Podcast. Please follow us at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter and facebook.com forward slash West Life Pod. You can also support and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash West Life and give us a subscribe on YouTube and turn notifications on. We'll see you again next time on another episode of the West Life Podcast.